Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I just wanted to do a little bit of a review of how I have found eBay over summer. So I thought about this video idea, I was kind of just packing some items up or taking some items inside, whatever it was, and I thought, you know what, I really have enjoyed this over summer and I kind of wanted to do a, just a very brief video kind of explaining what I've done with eBay over summer and why I've enjoyed it so much in, in the capacity that I've done it in. And of course, obviously, at the start of summer, I was I was doing this, or, or just after the start of summer, I was, uh, you know, sort of getting all this sorted, all the backdrop behind you and all that. And at the very beginning, when I first came back, I was sorting out my uh, shed, getting things in order a little bit. Not nothing crazy, but just getting things in, in a little bit more order. Um, and I did do a video on that, so I put a, a card up somewhere, wherever. Um, and I really like the layout of the shed now, I really like how it sits, I like this kind of side being YouTube and I like that kind of side being, well mainly eBay, I've got a few bits and bobs over there of just random boxes of stuff that I've had from childhood and all that sort of stuff, um, but yeah I like the way it sits. And what I do is I come in and I, you know I've got about 50 items or so on eBay at the moment and most likely, well actually there's going to be a few changes next summer so it'll mean that um, I can't determine exactly what's going to happen right now uh, with regards to my eBay. Uh, in fact, I, you know, obviously just thinking about that now I've realised that I do need to put in some new plans, some different plans for, for structure, how I'm going to go about that with the kind of ideas of, of what I've got going on next summer. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's kind of just been brilliant doing that sort of 50 items or 60 items, coming in here, packing up maybe twice, three times a week, maybe one or two items here and there, sometimes at the maximum about four items, and that sits brilliant with me. Because there was times with my resign, and it wasn't all the time uh, at all, there was a lot of times where I massively enjoyed packaging. I, I would come in here and even if I had 20 items to do, I'd really enjoy it. But there was also times where I thought to myself, it's just too much. I'm just doing too many parcels and I never really, I mean a lot of people, um, in the reselling community say they absolutely love packaging and they can package 50 items every day and all the rest of it. There's other people like more like myself who kind of say, well, you know, I like packaging here and there and I like doing it. I have spurts with it where over a few months I'll enjoy it and then I'll go off it again. And for me, that that's where I sit, obviously. And then there's other people who really just don't like packaging and either get the other half to do it or or maybe just kind of get through it as a slog basically and so doing this kind of part-time and having this kind of part-time experience of it which really has been the first time i have ever had a part-time experience with resign because i went full-time basically straight away um and i just sorted everything out and i and i tried to just do it to the full extent that i could um and so i'd never really experienced, maybe only for a few weeks or for maybe a couple of months at, at maximum, that kind of part-time mentality of it. Um, and it's really nice. I really enjoy it. Um, because of course, obviously, I need to be doing loads of different things. I've not got the brain. It's as, as daft as it sounds, as weird as it sounds, some people don't really have the brain to focus wholly on one thing all the time. Some The way some people's brains work, obviously I'm not going to get into the psychology of it here, uh, we could quite easily get into the psychology of it, but the way certain people's brains are structured uh, in terms of trait structure neurologically as well, they do need variety, they do need different things going on in their life and uh, to what extent this kind of innate or these innate ideas mixed with kind of socialization and and the jobs that people look for uh, attributes to people's unhappiness i don't know there's, there's probably some links that can be can be gained there and there could be brilliant psychological studies done in that area but the way in which people's brain structures uh, structures differ uh, are very apparent and so um it is for me the the part-time thing is brilliant being able to do 
the psychology and the philosophy and the poetry and all the rest of it is brilliant and uh, it allows for more of a um a holistic as i would say a holistic attitude to um life in the context of my work um uh, and that's brilliant so yeah i really do enjoy it and uh the one thing I would say with part-time, or, or a few kind of points I would raise with part-time actually, that are valid and that, that will uh, maybe help direct certain people as well who are, who are doing it part-time. The thing I've noticed is that I've got some items here where they're not the best items, they're some slow sellers. And I've had other items over summer that are fast sellers. And the thing is, I feel if you are part-time, you need to cut out all the slow sellers. You could sell ceramics and things like that, but some ceramics are slower sellers. Not all ceramics, but some are slower sellers. You could dip into niches and sell items at a few slower sellers, but if you're doing this part-time, it really is about this kind of, well, small number of items churning it over churning it over churning it over and that's what i've noticed and i've still got on a few slower sellers obviously because i just had to put them on their, their back stock and there's no point in me uh getting rid of them or anything like that that would be that'd just be foolish so uh i have got on a few slow sellers but what i've noticed doing this kind of part-time experiment shall we say is that you do need that core inventory of fast sellers and obviously you're restricted for how much inventory you're going to have anyway being part-time or how many items you're going to have on so um in that case it is very much kind of uh vital that that you're looking for uh, that you're looking for fast sellers not slow sellers fast sellers and uh and, and and you can churn those over churn those over so so of course when I came back for summer, I had already realised that doing a little bit of eBay at, at university. And I knew around the charity shops, this is what I need to look for. I am not looking really for pottery or anything like that. Of course, I'll pick up the odd bit here and there. But really, it's things like if I'm investing in Lego or if I'm selling Lego straight away, then, you know, of course, it's Lego. It's things like, uh, I mean, obviously, I've picked up a few bits and bobs to do with video games because they were cheap enough. And again, they're kind of quite fast sellers. Uh, just anything that I can see, I mean, anything new and sealed as well. I've always, how I, I have bored people to death with how much I go on about new and sealed items because... For me, they're brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. Not only is it, you know, quick photos, but it's it, it's fast sellers as well a lot of the time. You get brand new and sealed board games or brand new and sealed DVD box sets or anything like that. Then those are brilliant. They're absolutely brilliant. And you can get them out. And of course, some of that is what I've picked up. Aside from that, I mean, some plush toys and stuff uh, can still be good. I mean, the problem is with the plush toys, some of them are slow sellers. Some of them are fast sellers. So, you know, what I found with that is trying to look on Complete and Sold, gauge with my own knowledge base as well, what are the, the fastest sellers. And really, the best plush toys for me, personally, that I've always found is the um, Walt Disney ones with the little stamps on that are unusual, that are different. The Harry Potter ones or, or even like some of the slightly more plain ones, they're not so bad. But if they're a bit different, they're a bit unique, they're a bit special, then certainly that. And so that's definitely got to be the case for me. This kind of, uh, and for anyone really, part-time, doing it limited, um, is, is get those quicker sellers. Now, the thing also is, I should mention just before I wrap up as well, because I know we're coming up to 10 minutes now. I'd, I'd hope this video would be about six minutes, but, but there we go. Um, so the other thing for me is time. I've just mentioned about how I like to do different things and how I like to be here, there and, and everywhere and all the rest of it. I can't do that if I am spending an unholy amount of time on eBay. And again, that's something I recognised this summer and it's something that luckily I recognised early on. Now, of course, I knew that I could devote a good bit of time to eBay over summer, but I did have a summer list. Uh, I do 
a, a, another video that I could do if, if it's wanted, if it's requested, you can put comments down below if you would like to see this, is a goals and future direction video because I am very, very big on goals, future direction, future orientation, um, looking at the present, at what you've got going on in the present and how that is going to sow seeds for you in the future, not just with investing, not just with business, not just with um, things that you're reading, but also with your own psych psychology on how you can develop and mature your own psychology. Of course, that's a huge part of what I do. And I actually spend probably about three hours a day and I have done for, um, well, probably three hours a day since 2019, start of 2019 on my psychology. Now, of course, before that, I was doing it indirectly when I was looking into spirituality and things like that and, uh, and and I would say that was a whole different process and that was a whole different world but more specifically psychology since 2019 and I I do a whole load of introspection around that because I feel it's incredibly incredibly important uh, and and really for me your business development or your, maybe not your investing development, but your business development, your career development is kind of a reflection of your psychological development. Someone who is not necessarily a strong personality or, or more specifically, who, has a, who doesn't have a strong psychology. Um, that's to say they're, they're, they're not, let's say if they have a strong psychology, they're not particularly neurotic. They're, they're quite conscientious, they get things done uh, in, in a very kind of set way that is very attentive and very detailed. Uh, they get things done in, in a kind of healthy time frame. They are quite spirited. They're, they're also quite, they have quite a fierce dark side as well. You'll notice that if you look at any of the top guys in any of these fields, they all have big, big dark sides and they will get what they want, you know, and that is a part of a strong psychology. So your business development, your career development is kind of a reflection of your psychology. If you have a weak psychology, you're going to be pushed around by your managers. You're not really going to get, get up the ranks or anything because you're not going to have that kind of, you know, thing within you to, to do things, that natural spirit and drive and all the rest of it. And uh, you, you might be a bit neurotic and you might be a bit this and that and all the rest of it. So you, you kind of, you, you, you align up to your natural level as based on your psychological kind of uh, stance. Now, not everyone is conscious of their psychological stance, of, of how their psychology is in relation to others. And so they just stay at that one level forever. And they get pushed around and, and they, they feel inferior and they feel this and they feel that and they feel all these other negative things and they never advance and overcome those things. Other people are opposite. Other people are na almost naturally these people. They're almost naturally these people who are strong personalities. And then they are the ones who basically, well, I mean, there's all different gradients of this. It's not just a black or white thing by any means necessary. There's all sorts of gradients within this. But the real strong personalities and the ones that are, of course, at the forefront of the fields, those are more of the ones who really generate new ideas for society and, and push society forward. Um, and so that is something that is vastly important for your business, for your career, whatever, it, you're not going to get anywhere. And, and Jim Rohn and all sorts of people talk about this. I specifically mentioned Jim Rohn because I was listening to him uh, not too long ago, I don't know, maybe about a month, maybe three weeks, a month ago or something like that. And, uh, you know, we need that introspection and we need that kind of um, being able to advance ourselves psychologically, understand ourselves psychologically, so to then reflect that in the external world. Imagine the internal world of your psychology and the external world of, of your career and your house and everything, um, these align up and, and what's going to come out basically is a reflection of what is in here, of what is your 
kind of fundamental internal psychological state. And if that is not healthy, then that, the external world, is not going to be healthy. And that is crucial. That's really the only thing you need to know to master life. That's what a lot of people talk about with regards to the law of attraction or with regards to uh, Bob Proctor's philosophy on, on the law of attraction and things like that. It also comes into Schopenhauer's philosophy of the will and the ideal as well. There's, there's links to that. It's not synonymous with it, but there's certainly links to that. And uh, if you're interested in Jungian psychology, there's very, very, very strong links to what I've just mentioned there. And the, the overarching or the dominance, shall we say, of the collective unconscious uh, of the animo and the animus. Uh, not necessarily in their gendered form specifically of of female and male, but but more so in their ungendered forms of, of basically the, the idea, the anima, and the will, the animus, the spirit, and the soul. Um, but anyway, so that is very, very strong. And Jim Rohn always says about work harder on yourself than you do on your business. And uh, we could kind of uh, speculate that that maybe he knew and he understood, I don't know, I've, I've not watched all of his lectures or anything, he may have said this in one of them, uh, he knew that, of course, that psychological state was, and the external world was going to be a reflection of that psychological state of mind. So, yeah, for me, just to kind of wrap up on the whole eBay thing, because I've, I've diverted there a little bit into uh, psychology, but of course it's always going to be the way with me and philosophy. But these things all tie in together. There's really no point in talking about business without talking about psychology or philosophy, because they are, they are the same. And of course, um, a lot of people, a lot of philosophers over the generations, have talked about kind of uh, philosopher kings as they were known. For example, people who are involved in the world, involved in business, involved in maybe authority, running a country, politicians and things, who are known as philosopher kings, who are people who are brilliant philosophers, um, but at the same time run a country as well. And of course, we've seen that throughout history in various different uh, historical figures, but unfortunately, a lot of the time, politicians, people who run uh, the country or have authority, don't align to that kind of idea of the, the moral philosopher king. And so it's always good to, to do what you can to, to try and align to any sort of philosophical morality in any sort of kind of philosophical direction that allows you to be someone in the world who can help and who can um, do something and can enrich people's lives and can 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 try and uh, just, I don't even know what I'm trying to say, just kind of be someone in the world to, to advance things in a way, you know? Um, and that's all we can hope to do. All we can hope to do is like, is that. Unfortunately, at the moment, it's not even that because of things like climate change and all sorts of stuff, the, the state of the, uh, collective psychology that we're in at the moment um, it is very, very poor. I attribute that a lot to technology and other, but other things as well. Uh, so at the moment, it's not really about advancing things. At the moment, it's just trying to pick up the shit and, and try and put it, put it away, try and get it away. And then we can start to formulate some advancements because uh, Philosophy is one of those luxuries of a, of a healthy society. Unfortunately, at the moment, uh, maybe not so much society, but, but even sort of ecologically, environmentally, uh, we, we've not got a, a healthy basis there. So philosophy or, or even to some degree psychology, but I would more say philosophy, is one of these luxuries um, of, a, of a more well-rounded um, society in a more sustained society. Whereas when you've got a state of emergency, which is practically what we've got at the moment, um, you need to just take action. You need to think as, 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 as much as is possible in the smallest or the, the littlest time frame as possible. And then you need to take the right action. And that's very, very hard. It's incredibly, incredibly hard. But that's what we're at. We're at a time of action right now. We need action um, to, to be able to, to redeem something, 
within our collective psychology and within the, the, the nature of the planet. And of course, if you'd have listened to my words as well, put up higher, those two things aren't separate. Our collective psychology is what cre creates the destruction of the world or the redemption of the world. So of course, we, we do need to reverence and respect and, and, and transfigure or morph uh, that collective psychology that we've got going. Whether we can do it or not, well, remains to be seen. And uh, it would be a very, very defeatist, defeatist attitude to just simply throw it away and say, well, it can't be done. But it does worry me uh, the, the, the level of change that is necessary in the world and in, in practically every human being uh, to be able to redeem the world, both from, as I say, an environmental standpoint and this psychological standpoint. Uh, and that's um, it's a hard it's a hard fact really to to swallow that um, it's possible that that might not happen that that's not going to be the case but we have to stand firm and we have to say uh, we have to well not even say we have to take action based on our words so that our words aren't only hollow. Uh, to uh, to do things and to allow ourselves to, to try and get out of these things. But anyway, I'll leave it there. That was um, a little bit on philosophy, psychology, eBay, um, all these sorts of things. But you know what? I will finish on one point from eBay. The thing I've enjoyed most, and uh, or one of the most, I mean, there's a few things there I've pointed out of this video that I've enjoyed quite a lot. But one of the things I've enjoyed the most is listing. I've really enjoyed getting back into listing. I've really enjoyed dealing with items, doing 10 listings, 15 listings at a time, something like that. And I've enjoyed that massively. And I mean, all the more for the fact that a lot of the items I'm buying are things that are interesting and things that, that don't take a lot of effort with preparation and listing as well. And uh, so it's been, you know, it's been really, really lovely, that sort of side of things. And I remember my first listing session was when I was dog sitting, actually, for my friend. Um, and I managed to get a few listings in here and there. And I really, really enjoyed it. I really thought it was, was uh, absolutely brilliant. And, and since then, I've really enjoyed, as I say, this part-time mentality, the listing, the photography, even obviously the things like uh, packaging items and stuff like that it's all been absolutely brilliant and it's just been a nice break i suppose from the university stuff from the soul university stuff that can get quite mentally taxing can get quite mentally heavy and so um yeah certainly um I, i've enjoyed it and of course we are coming to the end of summer now i think that's the, the last thing I, sh I should say actually it is uh, the um, 11th of August today. This probably won't go up till a week or two, maybe even a bit more. I don't know. Um, obviously, I'm going back in September. And uh, so, yeah, the, the eBay will be winding down a little bit again. I will uh, continue to be doing Thursday talks. I will continue to be doing picking up little bits and bobs if I have the money, of course, at the time, around the charity shops and doing a bit of uh, eBay in uh, up at university of course i am going to take some items with me as well uh to put some items on um so yeah um it is kind of changing again uh it seems that things are always changing for me at the moment with summer with easter breaks and things and reselling and university and book writing and poetry and all sorts of uh wonderful crazy stuff um but yeah uh, it will, it'll be coming to the end soon. So I just wanted to mention that, of course, and kind of uh, also kind of do a video just to kind of conclude, in a way, I mean, I suppose it concludes summer in a, in a little bit as well, uh, or concludes kind of what I've, uh, uh, what I've enjoyed with eBay over summer and things like that. So that being said, guys, I will leave it there. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked it, please do leave a like down below. Uh, if you haven't already, then please do consider subscribing. And uh, I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon, guys.